find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where to talk tech, get geeky, happy 2016. It's the future now, and it's grand, and we're going to talk about that and so much more with me in studio on the couch, starting off the 2016 right with the slice slice on Broadway in his stomach and, mm-hmm. and ready to go in the new relocated couch of awesome. <laughs> We do. We need like a, a light up sign. The couch of awesome. It looks different, at least. Uh, so yeah, more room over there. It's tremendous. I want, I, I want like a, a staff. A staff. <laughs> yes. Like what kind of staff? But I can just I can I can tap when I want when I want attention. I can just tap my staff on, the, be, ha- on the couch of awesome. That'll be tremendous on an audio <laughs> podcast. <laughs> clonk, clonk over here, sir. <laughs> I have something to say. This is awesome over here. Also, we decided to start off with uh, one of our awesome past guests. We're going to revisit a lot. We're going to get a lot of new faces in, in here in 2016. I'm vowed, as I was saying off air, Chilla, that we're going to have less episodes of just you and I tech and t- talking technology. We're going to keep them all looped in. Um, I got some pretty cool ideas, a couple uh, things in the works, getting planned um, coming up here. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll spill the beans on a couple of them later in the show. But with us on the line, Rob Johnston. Rob on the run on your Twitters, on your Vines, on your Instagrams, owning the Internet, as it were. <laughs> and, and what an expensive thing it is, too. <laughs> exactly. How you doing, man? I am so well. I am so honored to be here. Like I said uh, before we started recording, I wasn't sure that I'd ever be asked back after the last um, uh, uh, failure of a, uh, of a, a podcast that I, I gave you. It wasn't. So. What are you talking about? You, you <laughs> came on. We talked like 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 a half an hour about 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 Vine because like I don't understand what the cool kids are doing with Vine these days, and you got it, and and you're doing all that kind of stuff over there. Um, of course, we're having you back, man. I, yo, well, tr- what I was we- so excited. I was so excited. You you literally like sent me a message on Twitter and not even like three seconds later, you said, hey, would you be interested in doing it this year? And literally, yep. <laughs> that was my response immediately. I, I'm so I'm so glad to be back on such an awesome podcast. Awesome. Thanks. I appreciate it. By the way, we got to point out because uh, you were you were heavy on my mind because something came up here uh, in the last couple of weeks. Because uh, as you know, all of us, we have our Giphy keyboards and and widgets in our chrome and everything like that and i get i get a, i get a gift a gift from my um from my wife and it turns Ooh. out to be you pouring coffee on yourself <laughs> vine is yeah. one thing but if you're somebody that pops up as a gift i think you've officially made a, a internet celebrity startup you know it's funny that particular gift is not one that i made um that is from a vine that i have done um but it, it has made its rounds all over the place to the point where I'm getting text messages from people that I have not talked to in many, many years. Um, and uh, it's literally just the text of that gif like, WTF, dude, what is, what is, why are you everywhere? And that, uh, if gifts had royalties, <laughs> I would have my own podcast, buddy. There you go. There you go. Um, but no, and of course, this is the awesome cast. We're getting uh, what's awesome for the week here, and, uh, and check out everything he's got going. Rob on the run on the Twitters and everywhere else, right? Um, so, uh, it, it's, it's the awesome cast. Check us out on awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to this and the awesome chat, our interview series, which I already broke my New Year's resolution, and we didn't have an interview this week. Uh, so eh, it happens. It just had to re- I had one. I had one, Chilla. I had one. It just got rescheduled for two weeks from now because they didn't realize they weren't in the country. Um, <laughs> oh. So there's that. I won't call them out. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's a good reason. It's a good 
purpose, you yeah, know. I forget. Reason. I mean, I'm a spy. I had to leave the country. You know, you know how bad I screwed up my my calendar when I was three time zones away about this time last <laughs> year. Like I did, I did my all my calendaring for uh, the wrestling shows for the entire year, and realized they were all three hours off. And I was like, why are these shows starting at two in the afternoon? It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, but uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have a lot of stuff happening there. And of course, check out the awesome specials we did. Chilla did a great uh, home automation special. Really did a deep dive in what, what's going on there. And of course, we had a great conversation with uh, Buzzy from the Epicast, uh, Epicast.tv. And just, just we got to throw down, just talk podcasting and talk about our, our philosophy about podcasting, where it's at, and kind of part two of our conversation from Evening with PodCamp we had earlier in the year as well for Podcast Day, International Podcast Day. Um, and you can uh, uh, hit us up, uh, AwesomeCast, on the Twitters, on the Facebooks, and everywhere else. And also, our friends, our good friends supporting us, and you can too. Um, of course, we appreciate anybody that's just sharing the show, loving the show, and, and telling their friends about it, and just uh, you know any way you can uh, just to support us. But of course, especially our friends over at Patreon.com/slash/AwesomeCast. Um, we got some great people that have been executive producers of the show for a good while now. Uh, Thistle C Business Development, as well as Mike Fedor. Uh, Mike Fedor show on Twitter and Thistle C on Twitter as well. And so much so, you know, it, 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 they're, they're executive producers at the $5 per episode level. So we really, really appreciate that. But we also, you never know what you're going to... You, you never know what you're going to get. They already got business cards, right? Or maybe around Christmas time, I may stock you at your house. Uh, that is a benefit to being a Patreon <laughs> supporter. Uh, here I am at, 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 at one of our wonderful Patreon supporters' houses. That, that They were not there, and I was caught stuffing cookies into a mailbox uh, by, by somebody. So that's something that happened. And, and, and unfortunately, they, they all have things to do around the holidays. I was doing some Santa Sorg. Uh, you can find out more about what that day was about over at uh, Basic Sorgonomics. And then I went for a drive with my dog. Uh, so there's that, too. I'm uh, having a lot of fun with Twitter video. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, patreon.com slash awesomecast if you want to do that. Let's get into it. The awesome things of the week. Um, I want to start with Rob because I really want to talk about this topic because I don't think we've touched on this a whole lot. And more so, I'm seeing them everywhere. And I'm seeing people awkwardly on them everywhere. Rob, what's your awesome thing of the week? Uh, I brought to the table hoverboards, my friend. Uh, hoverboards... <laughs> what's the deal with hoverboards? Now, for me, the reason why this week it's so prevalent, now it's been in my life for the last uh, for the last year, it's been something that, you know, I've watched kind of grow. Uh, they did a really organic thing with these hoverboards. You know, it, for those who aren't familiar, they're those little, um, they almost look like segues. You know, they've got the two round wheels and they're, they're you, you, you balance, you move, you, your balance goes forward, the little guy goes forward, it goes backwards. I've heard these things go up to like 25 miles an hour. They, they are absolutely not safe. And <laughs> no, you know, nobody's wearing helmets with these things. They're not thinking they're skateboards, right? So they're riding them around in the house. You don't ride skateboards in the house, right? You ride them in the street or whatever. There aren't like the hard-edged tables. There are not like walls. There are not so so in the house, these people are falling, and there are so many amazing fails on YouTube. I could go for hours and hours just watching these older people attempt to do this thing. Young people, old people, it doesn't matter. So hoverboards have been really on the front of my mind in the last couple of weeks, but I also really enjoyed looking up tweets of young people who did not receive a hoverboard on Christmas. <laughs> that has been such a joy for me because those things are like 500 bucks or 800 bucks, whatever they are. They're, they're, they're hundreds of dollars for these things. And if you've got two or three kids, they're not getting hoverboards for Christmas. Um, <laughs> and so there's a lot of disappointed children um, tweeting about how terrible their parents are because they did oh, not wow. receive Hoverboards, ungrateful little tweeters. Um, so yes, the hoverboard has been something that I've watched because, um, and I love that it's I love that it's gone huge and everybody's and they're catching fire and it's it's <laughs> there's a lot of mayhem happening. Um, but the marketing of these is something that has been quite re remarkable. The one thing that surprised me about uh, about this is you know there's those parents that ignored the 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 
the hey you should throw these away because they're going to explode warning oh yeah nobody's looking at that let's be honest yeah so i'm waiting for like the the aftermath of of like <laughs> the fiery the, aftermath <laughs> the fiery ma- aftermath when when skynet rises up and they all explode simultaneously <laughs> Like that's, <laughs> when when George Hot's uh, AI car AI that he made his garage uh, starts controlling all the hoverboards and makes them go off <laughs> because because I, I think right like a few days right before Christmas I think it was Amazon made an announcement to a lot of the people that bought through Amazon mm-hmm. they gave everyone reimbursements mm-hmm. so they gave everyone their money back and said don't even ship these back just please throw them away. <laughs> Wow. So you know how many hover hoverboards are out Ooh. there that should have been thrown away. That to your point, I don't want my kid screaming at me. Right, right. Because he didn't get a hoverboard, and here's this hoverboard that I have, and it might catch fire. So here's the interesting thing, Rob. You said about how how smart this was that it ca- that it caught fire the way it did, that it exploded the way that these are not good terms. Um, <laughs> you know that it expanded the way it did. I guess, but really, it was kind of an accident thing. So I, I guess there was this design. And it didn't get patented or something. So that's why there's this battery problem. Because everybody in China is just pounding these things out. And yeah. hoverboards, like there's no name. There's no official name for any of them. So we've all just settled on hoverboards, right? Um, and, and, and they'll range, but basically be the same design and quality from like three hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars um depending on where you got it and some of them that i'm seeing um we're like oh i didn't get this from x chinese company they're uh, the the big issue with the batteries um somebody was buying them as a reseller from one of the chinese factories and relabeling the batteries or something like that and just slapping them in there you know that, that that aren't appropriate and that's been part of the problem for this is is that kind of mismanaged thing just you know trying to shove this stuff through the pipeline because it's so hot right now and they can get them for cheap because china i guess in the, the one guy i know that we got got he got his daughter one and he got his girlfriend's son one i think it was he actually got theirs through ebay mm-hmm. so there's ebay resellers oh yeah that are doing like they're buy everywhere. it now so they're everywhere so they, they, and i've seen them at southwest village mall yeah, I mean, yeah. they're they you are everywhere. Right around the first time i saw one Okay. Everybody tells your first hover. hover. By the way, uh, back to the future on, part on, two. On, it was, it was by the 19. way, on, yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the video, on the video, I don't know if you saw. While Rob was explaining the hoverboard concept, uh, we were showing our uh, friend of the show, Jim Lokey. He, he's down mm-hmm. in Washington D.C. now. Um, at um, I, I forget, I think Fox down there. Um, and he, he's in the back trying out the hoverboard. And even like I got out um, over at work hard up there in Allentown and I'm on a back alley and there's like somebody's house comes out like it's an apartment or whatever comes out right there right beside where we park. And they're like doing that tryout of the hoverboard and wiping out on, on the sidewalk. But the first time I saw one, I was sitting at a Starbucks downtown Pittsburgh um, off of Market Square. And I just see two people hover in, hover out. And I'm just like, what the hell did I just see now? That, and now they're just everywhere. And that was about two months ago. <laughs> they're. There was, I, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that for me, what I love about the hoverboard is that about a year, a little more than a year ago, I started to see them pop up. Mm-hmm. And what the company did, and I haven't read any articles about this. This is just from my own perspective. Um, I, I'm someone who's very active on Vine and uh, have a lot of friends in the YouTube world. I saw that this company gave a number of top Viners who have millions of followers these this product, right? The hoverboard product. They didn't give them a name. The Viners just started riding around on them in six second increments. Didn't even say, hey, check out this product. And and then I started to see YouTubers like um, Pittsburgh's own I, Justine. Um, Her and her sister got a set of them. And everybody's just having fun on them. But they're not saying where they came from. They're not saying where you can get them. It was a complete viral marketing thing that I watched and I kept seeing these comments like, where did you get that? What is that thing? Oh my God, I gotta have this, I gotta. So there's been a year of these children like dying to get their hands on it. And I'm sure that the company that originally did that, that's probably not the ones catching fire. That's probably not the ones being eBayed. You're right, I think it was, there was a patent problem. Whatever it is, um, it was a viral marketing thing that absolutely, 
that, that, that took over. But it was fun from my perspective to watch the social media viral marketing of this. I've never seen a, a TV ad for it. Mm-hmm. I haven't even nope. seen like little ads pop up. It's literally been watching social media influencers push these things down the throats of children across the world. Or, or as as I was just doing, watching all the hoverboard fails right now. I, the, I there's a compilation from like Vine or something on here, and uh, I could watch this all day. I'm telling you, me too. It's pretty. That's amazing. why. That's why. That's why I brought it to the cast, my friend. Oh, geez, this is great. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, he's going down a hallway. How is this going to nope. end? And there they go. Oh, he's this guy's going to do a handstand on it. Um, yeah, for about I know, ten seconds. Yeah, not even ten. Oh, wait, I got to stick around for this. I'm sorry, audio listeners. Um, but really just look up hoverboard fails and it's the first video that pops up. Uh, but there, there was some kind of precursor toy to this. Uh, are you talking about the wheel? Yes. It was or, or the, or like the rock or the rocket skates. The, <laughs> no, there was like a wheel. It was like two wheels and they, it was kind of self propelled. So, and it so had to I do saw with, this. I saw this and I don't know if this is the same thing, but there's a thing that it's a tire. Like it is a tire, and you put a hand, a well, hand. You put a foot. We, we, I thought we did. We looked this up a, a little bit ago. Found out what the name of it was. But it, it's a tire. You got a foot in front of and behind the tire, and it's like a unicycle bouncy thing. And the first time I saw that, I'm sitting up here in Beachview, and I'm like, Beachview isn't really progressive. Like, you know, they're not gonna have cool toys like this, right? Just rolling down the road, rolling down right along the train tracks. I'm like, you know. Yep. And like, like that, it took me like a couple of times to see him to figure out what's going on because I'm like, who has a unicycle in this neighborhood? What's happening? But, but here? people, people who use those, a lot of kids who use those mm-hmm. can jump on these and have zero because they got because the, they got the bounce down. Right. Well, I I saw one of those at the Carnegie Science Center. They had an employee riding around the rails, you know, or uh, you know the the ramps. And I asked the question, how long does that last? And I'm pretty confident he said like 35 minutes straight. <laughs> and I thought, where can you go for 35 minutes before you had to plug it back in before you're stranded where, oh, yeah. where you are? I could I could make it from my I mean, it's a quarter of a mile from my house to the train. It takes me 12 minutes to walk. There you go. Okay. There you go. That's exactly oh. it. You know, there's a there's a that... large extension cord at all times. Though. <laughs> but no, when I would get to if I got to, once I got to work. Yeah. yeah. I could plug, it, plug in it in while the eight hours throughout the day right. and then when coming home. Just throw out that Fitbit now. I mean, yeah. you're not even <laughs> doing it. I'm saying New York City, you can get like three blocks. And <laughs> New York City, they're outlawed. They're they're it's against the law because you can't do it on the sidewalk. Yeah, they evoke that 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 like yeah. motorized vehicle on the sidewalk yeah. law. Um, I've seen that happening to these hoverboards too in malls mm-hmm. and stuff. People mm-hmm. are like banning them. There, it's yeah. like absolutely yeah. not. You can't it's do that. It's understandable. It's understandable. It's like the wheel shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so so there's that, but. Uh, you mentioned about kind of the commute thing. There was actually on, on The Verge, they had a great video because there was some kind of like fold up a uh, uh, motorized bike. That, okay. And they're trying to, they're, they just like rode it around New York City for a day and see to see how far they could go. And they said, you know, depending on your commute, it may just get you there. And it was kind of that same kind of concept. Again, this is a very specialized, I live in a very city thing like a Manhattan or, or, or near downtown Pittsburgh or something like that. Or you know, close enough to the public transportation. So I mean, it's a very, very niche thing, I think. Mm-hmm. But anyway, in cities, there's a lot of people there. So and, and, you know, you're not getting this in the country for any reason. You know, so remember, I it didn't... probably doesn't travel well across farmland. No, no, or gravel. <laughs> remember, I'm the one that didn't grow up uh, with with sidewalks around here. So, um, but anyways, no, thank you. Uh, I, I'm glad we finally got to take a deep dive into the hoverboard subject <laughs> we we had to wait for them to catch on fire in order to do that everybody apparently. else taking deep dives off of the hoverboard <laughs> <laughs> also entertaining thank you the internet uh chilla what is your awesome thing so, of the week so ces kicked off this week and one of the one what of the, there's a ces there's this a week CES what? This week. And it didn't even it doesn't even start really start till tomorrow, isn't that? Or is, was, it yeah, started it's today. A, but... What's that? What's that mini show that they do? I just watched the video on it today, but that's it's usually the thing where the most uh, interesting gadgets are from the, the the hate seekers or something like that. The uh, the one that the, the one that's always in that room in Las Vegas with the really horrible carpet. Uh, and I haven't. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember what it's called. The thrill seekers, the heat seekers, something like but, but, that. But everyone starts like, the showstoppers. Showstoppers? Is that what it is? And yeah. They, this is where like they used to have a lot of the Apple stuff. Yeah. That they don't really do as much anymore. Um, it started off as a small room, and then I think it became like three football fields in length, and mm-hmm. now it's kind of I think toning itself back down. 
and and a lot of people this year, especially Lenovo and Samsung, started leaking a lot of their information the la- over the last last day or two. Um, but the one thing that caught my eye was Samsung announced that they're going to do a sort of universal remote, sort of home automation play in all of their TVs. So if you buy a 2016 Samsung smart TV, um, it comes it comes with two things. It comes with this new smart TV remote. So when you plug a device into their TV, the TV recognizes what device it is. Like it could be a Time Warner cable box, it could be a Comcast box, a Fios box, a TiVo, an Xbox, a PlayStation, whatever. It says, hey... I know what this device is and I know what kind of remote and infrared or or Bluetooth it uses. So I'm not going to make you use their remote. You can use your Samsung remote and it'll it'll automatically figure out based on what's plugged in to the HDMI ports of, of what it needs to then control. Then the other thing that they're then going to in turn be able to do is now that they know who your cable provider is and where you're located, they know all the channels in your cable setup and and. and with their smart TV, they're going to have apps like Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, Hulu, whatever. And you're going to, they're, from what they're saying is they're going to integrate just like another TV channel. So if you're in the middle of watching something on TV and it thinks you may want to watch something on Netflix, maybe you'll see an advertisement or maybe the Netflix box will come up and it'll say, watch this. So if you're watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right, mm. and, and it sees that you have Netflix it's going to give you a thing for Jessica Jones. And you can just change that to that, just like changing channels. This feels like the promise of Google TV originally. It, it, like, and and I get this the... is powered off of Tenzin or Tizen, their, okay. their OS. The, the, the... That's, a, that's going to be a competitor to, to Android. So, so the other thing that it's doing is they're saying that, I don't know if we talked about it, but um, Samsung bought smart things or smarter things, the home automation company. So the TV will also be a smarter things hub um, for any for any home automation devices that can talk that kind of language. So, I, I, I mean, go ahead. That sounds amazing. I, I have an Apple TV. It does some of those things. But I think I, it, the Apple TV does. But where I think it kind of misses out is the live TV aspect and the cable exactly. box aspect. Because I have an Xbox One and I have the Apple TV, and I find myself going back and forth. Yeah. But they, they talk about what's in what's plugged into HDMI one. HDMI yep. one on my TV is actually my Xbox one, which then is actually piping through my TiVo box. For, right. For right. Like, you're, you're like you're like daisy chaining. Yeah, I'm, you're, I'm daisy chaining. But yeah. then then I can say Xbox go to channel Fox and it, it takes me to Fox or I can say Xbox go to PBS kids and it launches. It's the PBS getting kids there. Eye. It really is just getting there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We're like a few steps off from this happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, our freaking game console is doing that. But, but what I'm, what I'm happy about them getting into this, this run is that it, it's bringing more people into the ecosystem and it's going to create competition. Mm-hmm. And when we see competition is usually when we see better advancements from everybody. Right. So that, so that's why that's another reason I'm really excited for this. Awesome, awesome. You know what's sad? What's when sad? you see somebody get the uh, big 4K thing with all the doodads and the Netflix and knowing that you have an internet that will never be able to use any stuff on that TV. Because they have DSL. Because they have satellite internet. Oh. Yeah. I, I like looked at it and I was like, you realize you're never using any of those things on that box. Well, they did. They did <laughs> um, with the ultra high def and some of the stuff, they have announced some, well, not gonna... necessarily Netflix, but you can get, they're actually going to start releasing Blu-rays. Ooh. There's going to be an ultra high def. So I mean, there's. I'm just saying, like, like yeah. you look on it's a smart TV and it says Netflix and Hulu and all this other stuff, and you're like, you're not using yeah. any of that. You have a data cap. You're not. You're not touching that stuff. You know, it's just not it, only do you have a data cap, but you're not going to be able to stream that. No, so you're no, buffer absolutely for two not. Hours. Absolutely not. FaceTime was a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> plus that, plus that 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 delay. Holy crap! All right, uh, Chilla. I'm. Well, what uh, can I? Uh, first of all, honorary mention. Uh, the Pebble Time update came down for Pebble. Uh, mm-hmm. For the this is the Pebble that I traded you for the Google Glass. The original Pebble. The original Pebble that I traded you for the uh, well, actually the 2.0 Google Glass because I had a trade in. 
Um, how's that running, by the way? It's running Is great. it still running here it's, in 2016? It's still running in 2016. It still interfaces with the app. I'll be honest with you. The majority of my use is recording Christopher and being able to just tap to oh, record. That's enough. That's enough. Um, You're the only person in 2016 not using Google Glass <laughs> for surgeries. Yeah. And I, I actually... The big thing for me to get the video to sync off of it, I plug it directly in and treat it just like a camera on a computer. Yeah, that's fine. So that's fine. Works works extremely well. I do find myself missing it sometimes when I'm like, I have my hands full and I'm like, oh, I'd like to read the thing mm -hmm. and I can't turn my arm and I'm trying to figure out physically how can I turn this <laughs> arm without dumping this cup of stuff because I'm holding all this other stuff, you know? Um, and then I realize I just need to stop. Uh, but no, generally uh, this update uh, really added a lot of the... I can't really show it off because it's such a tiny thing. But um, it added the timeline. It added a lot of, like, kind of extra animations to things. Like, there's a little kind of movement whenever I dismiss an app. It's done in a different way. The music player got updated with more functionality. Like, you you hold the middle button, and now you have volume control on it, for instance. Yeah, cool. Uh, the apps, you uh, previously, if you if you had one of the original classics, um, you actually had to download a whole new app onto your phone in order to use this, the one that you use for the new time. For the launches. new time. Uh, you would have these slots, and you would just upload them one by one from the app on your phone. Now it just shows everything that I've kind of added to my locker. And it shows a list of all of those apps and it just loads them off of my phone as I need them. Like it okay. takes a moment. You see a progress bar and I don't think I'm pretty sure it'll just kind of delete some off or say you're full or something like that. Um, but it's a really nice kind of interface otherwise. Um, so I'm really kind of digging that. Like I said, it just feels like it, it adds a little bit new life to this thing. It makes me kind of, you know, I'm cool with kind of hanging with this for a little bit longer instead of upgrading to something else. Um, and I, I'm really, really happy with this original Kickstarter edition. Holy crap. Pebble watch. <laughs> well, and the, and the, the thing that always impressed me about their device was the battery life. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, you're Still not, amazing. It, it's not, it's not a day, it's not two days, it's not nope. three days. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're still getting more than more than that. So, so, but, but the real awesome thing of the week here, this is like my <laughs> half one from like two weeks ago, actually. Uh, but no, the real one here is something that you pass away. You're like, I bet this is going to be your awesome thing of the week. You're like, yes, this is my awesome thing of the week. Because I'm like, oh, okay, you're going to have to help me explain this thing because I, I, I want to know what you, what caught your eye versus what caught my eye. Now, it's uh, you can live stream. It's a four hundred dollar camera. Uh, more for just kind of consumers, right? Nope, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, it's this little. It looks like it looks like the Amazon Echo of of video cameras, I guess. And uh, and it'll live stream, and you can do stuff with that. And I thought that I'm like, okay, you know, why? And it says it'll bring you multi camera polish in a pocket size package. I'm like, okay, whatever. Another thing that's going to stream. Yeah, why don't I just get a GoPro, right? Mm -hmm. Then I started looking through this. So the big thing is, one, it's, it's kind of cool. I kind of like the idea of this thing. You can put on a little tripod and stick in the corner on a performance or something like that. Then I started looking at the video and I saw it in action. Now, there's a point here, and let me see if I can get for you guys visually. So you're recording. And as you're recording, you can actually pull up a little, you know, pinch the zoom, whatever the case may be, to a square on, like, somebody's face or something. Is, am I seeing this right? Is it auto-making shots for you? Yes. Out of what it's getting on the camera? Yes. So it's taking a wide shot. So I take a wide shot of just a bunch of people on stage, say, or they're showing just people walking around in a fashion show in a room, basically. And it knows it's playing rule of thirds and saying, OK, these two people over here are a shot that you can square in. This person's, um, you know, uh, you know, upper body is a shot over here. Here's the wide thing. It's moving with the person and will follow it as if you're following on a tripod or something like that. And it's streaming and recording to your phone. And, and is there oh, it's actually currently available for a one ninety nine pre-order. At half price. Yeah, and I'm thinking I I what? may actually pull the trigger on that one. That, that makes things more the interesting. Is, it, is there any resolution as it as it goes in for that? Does it when it goes in closer? Is it getting pixelated? Is it uh you know is because it's 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 the same image, right? Right. And right. It, Again, in the stats, it looks like it records at 4K. It records at 4K. So, so think of the the subsections of 1080P within the yeah, 4K that's, frame. That, so you already <laughs> if it's if it's at least smaller than a quarter of the screen. It's, you know, you know, it's interesting. I've never seen that. So, That's so, amazing. And it's a, from, from one of the things that it was saying was it kind of gives you that ability to then go back and quick edit and say, I want this shot and then Wait, this it, shot and it, that pan, was pan to this and then do this. That was the promise. I remember that was the first thing when we were uh, at my old job, we were upgrading to HD and we were we were still releasing things on DVD. So there was no need for HD. 
But one of the points of doing it in HD was we can recrop shots. We can crop mm -hmm. out. Because uh, in, in that case, there would because it was um, a safety environment, if there was something in the corner laying over there, um, I could crop it out and not have a problem with quality. Like, oh, somebody left that cord or, or a tripping hazard over here. Oh, we'll just crop that out. We're good. We have plenty of bandwidth in the image that, that we can throw this in, in there. It's kind of the same thing with 4K. That's why you want to shoot 4K these days because you've been like, oh, I wish we were tighter on his face. You shoot an interview and you just do one shot of an interview and really cut in and out and make it look like it was two cameras. Well, And where I'm thinking and about I, it being used for is it, we don't do a lot of video work today, but I could see if we had something like this to let you do it extremely quick and easy. To have, and, and where I'm thinking about it is a panel discussion. So I have a long table with three people sitting there, right? Jeez. I can, can I can I just use this. I can quick. On. I can put this there, and then I can do a wide shot with all three people, or I can. And when someone's talking and they talk for a prolonged period tap, of time, tap, 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 tap. And, yeah, that's that's wow. where I really think for for two hundred bucks, yeah. it, it now it's it's worth it. Now, what about audio? Does it have any of the audio specs? Because a, a camera like that, if you have to have an external audio, you know. Uh, uh, source. I mean, that causes some problems, or is it just right. like a? What's that audio like? Well, I think anything like that. If you're doing some pro audio, it looks like there's a speaker on the front of it. Um, I'm not seeing any specs specifically about audio, but I think you're 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 capturing from another source at that point. I'd also want to know what it does in low light because mm -hmm. I because <laughs> you're not always going to have that perfect. Mm -hmm. thing. I don't know. It's, it's just a really great concept. And so, does it give you four pieces of video? And then and then you can go back. And, no, no, no. It, it actually there's a there's a point in the in the preview video they give you where you actually hit a thing to see what are all the shots. It actually shows you like six different options. Okay. So uh, is it gonna like, is it, is it an automatic like ten burns or whatever it is where uh, where it just automatically kind of zooms in? And yeah, it can, yeah. It, it, it kind of uh, it, it looks like it'll pop into like you it, you're they're kind of again kind of pinching and zooming and and. and setting up the shot and then looks like then executing it. Well, once, once I, I think it actually, I think it actually give you four pieces that you can go back and edit later. Mm -hmm. It'll get, no, from, from my understanding, it gives you one piece, one mm -hmm. video that you can then use this, this app mm -hmm. to then pinch and zoom in on and, and splice things together as you want to. And I'm not clear. Is it recording to the phone, to a stream or to the device as you're doing this? I thought yeah. it was to the device. Now, it, now, I saw that there's a connection in here that they are th th with a live stream, uh, the, the company live stream. Mm -hmm. um, so, and actually, wait, so this is actually from Movies the brand, live streams the company is right. from. Okay, I get that now. Um, okay. And, and so the, the, there's obviously going to be some build in there. So I, I think after you make all your movements, I'm wondering if it's still capturing all that because they'd have to have some crazy. I love this comment in here because this is completely my life in a nutshell. No one wants to go home and edit for hours in Final Cut Pro. Right. But that's what I get paid to do. <laughs> uh, and certainly no one can afford to show up at an event with three cameras and a cameraman. Hey, can we uh, scale back one moment here and realize this is a $400 4K camera as well? Right. Yeah. Now, now, granted, when I say those, those numbers don't add up for you if you're a video professional. Um, remember, we had... Um, $150 Kodak HD cameras. Do we remember what the HD was like on them? Like the old 1080p? Yeah, the 1080p it ones. Kind of kind of janky, right? Yeah. Kind of kind of uh, uh, pixely and 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 not great and definitely not good in any light situation almost. Um, so so again, you, you talk about the low light situation. This is not going to be the best camera in general. I mean, this is going to get the job done. It's good. And, and I, I I think this is I think this is meant for your podcaster, your yeah. I'm trying to create a quick music video. I immediately hear people like I can hear all the guys who've ever shot a wedding. Like I can have three you know, different nah. shots. I can edit it <laughs> on the fly. I can give them a product at the end of the wedding. Like anyway. yeah, I don't think this is going to be that device. Well, and also, also I think it's a more low. Also, end, I don't think people. I don't think. I I don't think people realize the heaviness of live um, editing. Yeah, a, a show. Um, well, and you don't have, and I think part of the point of this though, is you don't, you, there's a couple different options from what I was seeing. You can live edit. You don't have to. Okay. You can go in after the fact, but I think their point is our user interface to edit that video after the fact is a lot easier to use than going back in for hours and hours and hours of the final cut. 
Wait a second. So this is, it will automatically detect faces and other points of interest. How is it determining a point of interest? Like, uh, that chair looks interesting. <laughs> you know? I'm sure it's movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's probably movement. You know, like there's there's action over here, so we're going to center in on it. Like I can't. I want to see. I want to see the movie fails on this. Like, why is this shot when you pull up the six when it's selected all like six shots for you? Like, like. What, how many of them are on somebody's crotch for some reason? You know, or, or like, why? Why is this knee moving There's over here? There's going on anywhere in the room. Because, because yeah, one of the yeah. yeah, and that's one of the things they said in in one of the art of the other articles that I read was, you're probably not going to want to use the automatically generated version of the video. Not in the end, no. But you can you can go see what it put together for you, and then you can start off with that. And then go back in and edit. From and that there. could be a good learning. For, it's kind of it's kind of how I you know what that, it's kind of exactly how I do graphic design these days. And we'll get to that in a moment. Actually, <laughs> uh, my new my new post addiction. So, um, but no, it's the movie. Oh, I lost the name of it already. <laughs> uh, it's just the movie. It's the movie yep. camera, and uh, it's uh, three ninety nine, and you can get it for uh, one ninety nine pre order right now. And I'm putting that on my birthday wish list. Apparently. Um, right behind the 360 camera that's like 300 bucks out there. The Rico one, like I really kind of want to get my hands on that and play with just it. Just a little under the hoverboard. Just a little, just, and that is all behind the hoverboard because <laughs> I have better health insurance and I'm okay going into the hospital. Um, hey man, we showed it earlier. Jim Loke did fine on that thing. He had somebody, he had somebody holding his hand the entire, like he literally had somebody holding his hand the entire way, <laughs> but, but hey, hey. If Loke can do it. If Loke right. can do it, I mean, yeah. most of us yeah. here have seen him play yeah. softball. If Loke can do it, uh, yeah. I think we'll be just fine. Uh, but anyways, that's what he gets, that's what he gets for being too busy for the Christmas special. <laughs> He'll be back. We're going to get him. We're going to get him. Um, but anyways, uh, hey, uh, first we're going to get to some other stuff here, but a big Big shout to our friends. Some guys that uh, we got the message. Our friends from Slice on Broadway very much enjoyed the cookies. Um, so uh, when we were picking up our pizza today, so we appreciate that. We appreciate them. Uh, Slice on Broadway provides us with the perfect pepperoni pizza, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting uh, for uh, almost two years here coming up, I guess. Um, they've been supplying us, so guys like uh, Chilla are, 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 are liable to come in here and supporting our, our crazy parties that we have for our end of year as well. Um, so great stuff here right along the tracks in Beachview as well over on the Main Street in Carnegie, PA. Hey, the exit's open. You can get there now. Uh, <laughs> I never stacked the other. I've been avoiding Parkway West. Like I just like I haven't gone anywhere Parkway West for about six months, it seems, because I just avoided it. Um, I'm very traffic adverse in this city. Uh, but anyways, uh, and bridge impro- implosions as well. But go check them out. Thank you. So- Broadway delivered to Oakmont. I'm, yeah. I'm dying over here. Give him here. a shout. Give him a shout. Slice on Broadway. Hit him up. Hit him up, Rob, right now on the Twitters. At PGH underscore Slice. And be like, man, get you guys out in Oakmont. Get us a Slice yeah. on Get us a slice on Oakmont or something. I don't know. On what Allegheny you're... River Boulevard. <laughs> Give me a slice on Allegheny River Boulevard. Uh, but thank you so much for them. You can so uh, I'll let them know you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. Go check them out if you're in the area and uh, and and uh, hit them up. Like I said, PJH underscore slice on the Twitter or look up for sli- slice on Broadway on Facebook or on the Instagram and you'll get hungry too. All right, so let's get into. I got some uh, things of the week. First of all, I, I okay since I kind of alluded to it here a little bit ago. Uh, actually, let me slide that down. Wait, is that Kurt Angle going down on a hoverboard? Is that what just happened in there? <laughs> I wasn't. And the I internet haven't... rejoiced. <laughs> I don't know about that, but our friend from California, uh, Alex Cars, uh, did find very, very easily uh, the, the said gif of you pouring coffee on yourself that uh, we were talking about. So uh, for you guys on video to check out what we were talking about, there. And that's Mike Tyson falling in the one. Is that Mike Tyson? Yeah. Oh, they made fun of that on uh, Monday Night Raw, actually. Oh, did they? I think about that. And they, I saw the one where they had the, the, the little Joe Boxer, or whatever his name was, pun, from Punch-Out, from Tyson's Punch-Out from <laughs> Nintendo. I, I've seen nice. overlays of that in there. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I want to touch base here. Um, I, I think this app uh, caught my attention um, right after our last episode here for the year. Uh, officially, because I think that's when I started making all the cool images for um, our, our promotions there and everything. Uh, this is an app for iPhone, just iPhone for right now. Uh, I don't think it's on Android yet, it looks like. Uh, but it's called Adobe Post. And uh, I, I don't know, we talked about Over on here before, right? It, it's kind of, you can take the pictures in and, and add some text and everything like that. Um, 
Post seems to add a lot of design elements to this uh, kind of concept. Um, kind of ready-made that you can kind of start with something or you stick in your text and you can actually roll through and uh, it'll it'll show you kind of what it can do with that text. Mm-hmm. Um, if you follow any of my accounts, whether it be Awesome Cast, Wrestling Mayhem Show, or just mine in general, or Sawtooth Willie, or some of my clients, I've been really, really big on playing around with this. And, uh, and here's here's the app. If you guys are on video, you see you got some designs to start off with, and you can kind of remix these as you go. Um, and they had a lot of holiday ones actually around Christmas time, and they just kind of updated it for some new seasonal ones. But if you go in here, one is nice. If you log in with your Creative Cloud account, if you have like Photoshop or something like that, this will actually sync across your I- iOS devices. So this actually will pull up on my iPad with all of these images. So, you know, here's like something I'm doing for the podcast on Monday. I'm trying to give, you know, give them some more individualized pictures and images. And we throw the text in there and you're good to go. Or something like, um, that's one that's, one that's incomplete, but the home automation, automation episode of, uh, Awesome cast. I, I threw this one together with Chilla hanging on a couch, and I threw a Bitly link in there so you can get right to the episode and throw that on Instagram or something. It's, it's been pretty nice. Um, and just kind of playing with that in general. Just my dog saying hi, and I'll send it in a text. You know, looks looks kind of decent. Uh, but if you go in here, let me pull up. Let me pull up the one that I that's incomplete here. So this is one I was starting to throw, put together for the podcast throwdown, and we just didn't finish it. So you have the text in here. You go in to edit. And it gives you gives you all the tools and everything as you as you go in here. You can change your color scheme and everything like that. But the cool part is after you put your text in, you go into design, and it just completely reconfigures everything for you. And again, uh, you know, we talked about how how that other device could give you kind of a head start on oh, this is how I make something look good in video editing. I know how to design to a certain point, but I'm not good at a starting point with it. Like mm-hmm. I oh, this font I need to take, change this font to X in order for it to kind of fit in with things right can, can you move the text layers around yep. after it does that i can go in there and i can move it around and reposition okay, cool. it like if it's if it's over your face or something like that mm-hmm. um and and it's it's super simple and, and and it's easy for me to just sit on my phone it's like oh i need an image for something i'll make it download it to my camera roll and go ahead and schedule it for the next day for like like you know, our, you know, our posts come out on Wednesdays, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't want to flood it with a lot of activity, other than we're already posting all the shows on Wednesdays. So for Thursday, I'll go and schedule a post of, hey, here's the image one. Maybe we'll have an image of uh, Rob here pouring coffee on herself and say, hey, join us for the awesome cast, whatever we name the show tonight. Um, and uh, you know, something that'll catch people's eye, and we'll throw that up Thursday on on all of our stuff and schedule that out. And, uh, you know, something that's nice, quick, shareable, um, you know, something like we introduced a new character on Sawtooth Willie this week. So I threw up just kind of a very obfuscating picture of that on Sunday night and got a little bit of reaction out of it, too. And I think that kind of really primed people for uh, watching that new episode on Monday when it came out in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's kind of a quick way if you're kind of again, you, maybe even if you just want better looking, better looking Instagrams, you know, it's something to play with there, especially if you're, you know kind of need a handhold and say okay that's that looks good mm-hmm. you know and have a little bit of help with that so the name of the app again sorry adobe post adobe post, post. it's a green icon if you're looking it's, for that you don't you don't have to be an adobe cloud no 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 it does it. weird things where it says oh we'll give you more designs if you share this on twitter but i think it also gives you a little bit more when you log in with the adobe account mm-hmm. um I, i'm pretty sure i can probably access most of these in 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 the creative cloud perhaps because uh, I'm not a Creative Cloud member, and I've I've played around with this. Yeah, and yeah. I, it's and a nice free app. It's yeah. not it's not not something that needs to have the subscription watermarks or anything like that. No, no oh, uh, it does. There is an Adobe Post watermark in the corner. I can't remember if that stays there because you need to share it, like say, hey, tell your friends about this, or sure. if it's a sign in thing that makes it go away. I think that might actually be a sign in, so you okay. might get stuck with a hashtag Adobe Post. But you can just, all, but you can always crop that off. <laughs> yeah, you make the picture a little bigger than you want it, and then crop it, crop it and so post. <laughs> in this awesome cast, it, it it shows me that I need to be watching and listening to the awesome cast more often. <laughs> there you go. It's 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 it, we, we teach you lessons about life and software. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, from that I got uh, we got um, first of all app of the week. Uh, almost my awesome thing of the week. This is especially uh, interesting for the blind. Uh, it's called, I don't know how to pronounce this, iPoly? 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 So basically, the concept is, 
Um, you download this app to your iPhone. It is iOS. I'm sorry, guys. So many iOS-only devices here. But it is actually going to identify objects that you put in front of the camera. It is showing in this picture they're in a grocery aisle, and, and it was showing Coca-Cola because there's the bottles. It, sees, it says that's a sofa. It said, you know, it, 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 and, and they were showing a video particular, like I said, aimed at the blind. Um, and, and, and kind of giving them that ability to identify things in front of them. And like the one guy, he was wearing headphones and, and they had him pull his headphones off of his, off of, off from around his neck and he held them up and like and him, he was, you know, he's blind and he's fumbling with this thing. And he got the, I managed to get the headphones in front of the camera and it said headphones or it said new Apple headphones, which was hmm. interesting. And, uh, and you see there's an edit in there, and you can also change it from object to color. Uh, so if you just want to hold it up to something, I think this would even work for the colorblind, too. Well, and that's where I was going to say that, 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 that my neighbor's colorblind, and he actually does uh, some home remodeling and stuff like that. And he is actually the one that did, did our house. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I hope you like the color of the bathroom, because I couldn't tell what it was. So wouldn't that be nice for someone like yeah. him like to see... Oh, this is brown. Oh, this is or green. Or identifying the color of those headphones that we yeah. disagreed on earlier. <laughs> um, that looks red to me. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the question it, is, could the app tell whether the dress was blue and oh, <laughs> or whatever that is? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's um, a question. So, so I, I didn't know like how it would work down here. So, in, in preparation, I, I took a couple pictures upstairs in the living room. So, there's there's the wonderful painting that my wife painted. Uh, it, it is a painting. It identified it correctly. And uh, there's a lamp. So, so I mean, there's a little bit of my testing there. Um, there was one point where I held it up a certain way in my living room and it thought it was a bathroom. That was a little weird. Hmm. But <laughs> other than that, no, I, I think it's, like I say, it, it, we, we talked about with robotics, about um, some, some that they're working on, like at Carnegie Mellon, there, where the robots the robots uh can can identify objects at this point you know and be able to do something um and here i'll, I'll just kind of go live here so uh grass uh, yeah, grass cd i don't know I, <laughs> so I'm, I'm i'm pointing at my my laptop over here it does identify oh. eventually as a macbook macbook pro even <laughs> at some point fireplace um, so let's let's hold it up to the monitor um fireplace MacBook laptop pro lap. laptop this is a very old sony um, um lap uh, monitor Let's, let's just throw it over a chilla and see what it thinks is going on over here. It's gonna have a hard it's gonna, time. It's gonna take a too, I think there's too much stuff. Yeah, in there's, the, there's too many objects. Can you mostly. get in on the tripod? Backpack. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. That's where it's confusing. Well, maybe, maybe we'll, motorcycle somewhere in here. Um, I'm, I'm pointing it at my soundboard, and maybe it'll pop up from there. It, like it, it's kind of noticing designs. Right? What if you pointed to the little character you have on your monitor there? Oh, Mondo Gecko over here from the Ninja Turtles. I'm not sure. <laughs> and what I say is, like, I, I don't know what that is, you know. And I think you can actually go in here and kind of edit. Like, say there's a picture and you can teach it and say you can describe what's in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does mostly work on um, if, if it's an object that's framed in the picture. Not like, obviously, that picture of you, there's everything in that frame over mm -hmm. there. So it, it really doesn't have any kind of silhouette and kind of texture and any kind of pattern to follow of... This is the object shaped like this. Interesting. So I pointed out my like flat screen TV, right? I thought it, was, it just put CRT. Kind of curious, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but again, this is kind of crowdsourced like that that you can adjust and say I have a this stuffed monkey that nobody else has. You put stuffed monkey, right? And now that's in the database, and that only makes it smarter as it goes. So um, so check it out. It's AI. P O L Y dot com. If you want to find out more information on it, I actually found about this on Product Hunt. I'm trying to dig into ProductHunt.com a little bit. Um, kind of a nice place for um, just finding out new, new new gadgets and websites and everything that people are into. Um, so go check that out. And also, I had a tip. I lost my tip. Tip a trick? A tip or a trick? A nugget. A nugget of information. Or just a fun thing. And this kind of goes along with our uh, hoverboard fails we were talking about earlier. Uh, there was a great video from The Verge um, where um, she's got a Samsung Gear VR like we were playing with here in the studio that, uh, that belongs to you there, Chilla. Um, that's one where it's just a Samsung phone in, in, in basically a very fancy Google Cardboard in the long run, right? 
with all the, you know, it's based mm. on Octavius Rift and everything like that. So this this lady went and uh, uh, rode the subway with it, sat in a coffee shop with it, uh, sat on a park bench on a nice day with it, because, <laughs> you know, the view. Um, and then they rode in a car and, and made it go in circles in a parking lot. And the thing that I didn't realize is you can't just sit in the car and use VR. Because it doesn't know if your head's moving or if everything's moving. So when the car turns... It thinks you're turning. It thinks you're turning. It doesn't know the difference between your head and everything around you. Because oh. of the orientation. So it, 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 it was kind of curious to see these kind of use cases um, worked out here. And, and just seeing her, kind of, it was fun to see her also. <laughs> also, there at one point she's in, sitting on a couch trying to watch a movie. And then realized, I really wish I could have a glass of wine right now. And somebody hands her a glass of wine. Now, apparently, uh, there was a story about the, um, uh, what's the one with Steam? The HTC Vibe, mm -hmm. uh, where there is a camera on the other side, so you can look through. And, and they said specifically, it solves the drinking water while using VR problem. But does it do an overlay? I don't know. Because you it. can do, you with the, with the Galaxy VR, you can do that. You can tell it to turn on the camera mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the that, other that side was, of the phone. That was actually in here because they, they, they pontificated. Like, now I'm on and people are looking at me looking funny, but I'm actually looking at them looking at me looking funny. But eventually, <laughs> we're all going to be on the train uh, with these VR helmets on our heads. And we're all going to be turning on looking at each other when we don't think we're looking at each other. <laughs> well, and I haven't looked to see if there's any updates. I wish they did like a, you could turn on like picture in picture. Mm -hmm. So you could ca like kind of an awareness mode. Yeah. That that's what I, where I really think it, it needs it, or so you can podcast on the awesome cast yes. while while doing that and not accidentally punch you in the head on the couch <laughs> like Katie did that one time. So, uh, but no, it was a fun video. Look for us. What's that rep? Speaking of which, where is Katie? Where is Dutters? Oh, was... she's at some some hockey game. No, uh, you, you know, I was against there. There's absolutely no. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, the pen schedule plays havoc on on this show when we get around that time but uh but anyways no look up uh, samsung's gear vr in the real world over on the verges uh youtube channel you can check that out it's it's a, it's a fun couple of minute uh of view right there so um <laughs> a comment from before from our friend alex uh, says that ai poly that we we're just looking at uh looks like a fancier version of google goggles kind of because that, that kind of you take a picture and it'll identify something and, mm -hmm. and google search it um yeah, kind of, kind of a higher end of that. Uh, also, fan submission, also from Alex. He uh, he discovered, and, and you you pointed something out with this on on Slack when we were talking about this, Chilla. Um, his awesome thing of the week is uh, the fact that Google Hangouts can be used as your method of calling and texting from Google Voice numbers. Um, he just he literally just found out that that was a thing that you could do. Man, I live on this thing. Like that, that's how like, I you know the, the the one office we work out of. There's no cell set reception up there, and mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm just like, hey, can you call this number so I can answer on my <laughs> on my computer, please, on the Wi-Fi because this doesn't work. Um, so that's been a big lifesaver for me in a lot of cases. So. And I think some Android in general, I think you can set it where the default chat app and default text app is Hangout. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. So you. Like like the the apps for phone and tablet, you can kind of have them take over that same type of methodology. Why are you you're flashing your flashlight at me and taking a picture rimmed of yourself? Rimmed eyeglasses, rimmed yeah. eyeglasses just came up <laughs> over here. I'm sorry, I, I sat it down and I forgot it was on and it said wall. So we got that. We have Ninja Turtles. Can we get some Ninja Turtle action here? Maybe. I'm surprised it can't do microphone. I haven't looked at microphones yet. Point it, point it at me. Let's see if it says extremely single, good-looking homeowner seeking. All right. All right. There we go. We're going to put it on Rob. <laughs> I'm so not man, sure. Was, still not it? sure. Still not Fat sure. Fat guy pours coffee on head. Is that what it says? <laughs> and it pulls up your gift. There we go. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to get back to some more stories of some stuff we're popping up from CES this week, of course. Um, and Rob, if there's anything else story-wise you want to bring up as we're going here, please please feel free or chime in however you want here. Um, but uh, well, we got some cool stuff going on um, here in the city. Sidekick Media Services, guys, we have a website now. Oh, you're on the internet. We're well, we 
I don't listen. I'm always on the internet. So let's be honest about this. I'm like literally attached to the internets these days. Um, but uh, no, we have a website now. You can see what kind of stuff we're doing. Sidekick Media Services. It's a new division of Soratron Media Incorporated. Uh, and again, we're more targeting, um, you know, uh, education with social media, podcasting and the like. And of course, you know, working with some businesses and help them make some really, really cool things. So again, we got a bit of a portfolio up there you can check out. We got some things happening. And you can also check out, first of all, sign up to our newsletter. Uh, it's the, the, the still the creator's new, newsletter from Sorgatron Media. But we got a special thing. We have an introduction to podcasting webinar that we did a few months ago. Uh, you'll be get, getting that for free. You sign up um, on the banner there at sidekickmediaservices.com or, or the pop-up at the top over at sorgatronmedia.com and sorgatron.com. And uh, also you'll be getting some uh, write-ups that I'm trying to do every week as well, a little bit of update, everything going around the area and some other news and tips and tidbits if you're if you're interested in getting into video production, podcasting, and, or the Twitters even. Uh, we, we touch on a little bit of that every week there. And, of course, the uh, educational series from Psychic Media Services. We're going to have a, 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 a workshop, actually, this week, uh, this Thursday. Tickets still available. Uh, Insta content, Snapchat, Periscope, and more ways to make content now. Our friend Dutters, Katie Dudas, is going to be a part of that. Um, we, we actually tag team uh, uh, this session uh, version of this session impromptu over at PodCamp Pittsburgh. So we're kind of uh, boiling it down a little bit and having a good talk about that. If you can't make it up to uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh this Thursday, we're also doing a webinar version next Tuesday at 2 p.m. All the information over there um, at SidekickMediaServices.com, Sorgatron.com, or you can hit up the bit.ly link I just made today and forgot, bit.ly slash Sidekick Workshops. You can get right into the Eventbrite and find out all the ticket information uh, for that as well. And, uh, and look out for some other stuff. I think we're going to do some other free sessions around. I, I, Chilla, I think I'm going to go to the library again. We used to do that. I miss doing those intro sessions. I like so, the library sessions. I want to go. You know what I want to do? Have you seen the new library down the hill, up the hill here? Yes. Up and down the hill? I don't know. If you walk out my front door, look left, and that shining beacon of light at yes. the top of the hill, that's not the church anymore. It's the library. Uh, so they did. A, they did an amazing job. It took it took a while for them to, from for them to kind of get that out. Pittsburgh. And, it took a year. It took a full year. Um, Pittsburgh has the sexiest damn libraries I've ever attended <laughs> um, because I, I was in the East Liberty one and it, we, we filmed a, the the talk uh, uh, show your work talks uh, a few weeks ago that we talked about in the show and wow that is a crazy nice library um, I, like I want to every time I drive by what's that people still read books. Is that a thing? Yeah, wait, I'm getting all my comic books from there these days, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and they do have online digital version. I haven't checked yeah. it for a little bit. I heard it got better. So, All right, uh, let's get into... Well, the online digital, you can actually check out from other... A lot of yeah, other cities' like, libraries will really? let you join remotely. Ooh. Like I heard the Boston Public Library is oh. has a phenomenal electronic collection check that out sometime yeah they were using overdrive it was a little janky at the time and uh, for a time they're like you get audiobooks but are all dot wmas i guess so they could expire this is a few years ago or... and this is before this i think it was when iphone was just kind of becoming popular mm -hmm. so it was like oh of course you're gonna do this and watch it on or listen to it on your windows computer or the only smartphone the windows phone at the time you know mm -hmm. or something like that so anyways we got a lot of stuff here. Uh, Chilla, I'm going to let you start this off because I don't want my thing to take up the next half hour here uh, as far as... Uh, so CES is happening. Rob, are you, are you following CES at all and what, what, all this new stuff that we may never get in our hands here this year? I, I'm going to be honest, not really. Um, I, 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 I'm learning a lot while I'm sitting here listening to you guys, uh, you guys talk. So, um, uh, you know, stuff comes across. Like, I get... I get a lot of emails and stuff about new technology and all the different things happening, and, and da, 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 da. I have to sift through them because a lot of it doesn't even interest me at all. A lot of it is like TVs, like oh look, curved TVs or 3D TVs, I, the one year or something well, like that. I just, okay, uh, this is going to be absolutely the worst confession ever. I don't really love sports either. Like I like I'll watch football or I'll watch baseball, but I don't get into um, players and, and get like super excited about a certain player because. The same, it's the same feeling I feel about technology in that, great, for five minutes, that's the guy. And then you're never going to hear about him again. It's like, okay, <laughs> it's not, it's cool. Like, oh, cool, that watch was so rad. And then it's completely obsolete in two days. 
And so I, I guess I get too invested in the things that I truly love to get really excited about tech. So please, please forgive me for that rant. But I just don't get very invested in a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, sorry. no, that's fine. I mean, I'm just kind of curious because it's just us that pays attention to it um, at this point. But I, I feel like a lot of these things form the norm. Right. Yes. Right. So yes. that, that's where, where I think like we help bridge that gap of, yes, we're the fanatics and yes, we get super excited for the five minutes. Something's really cool. Well, you know what? There's the, there's one, I don't want to say trendy, but like there's one thing that I think everybody can get geeked at. I saw you have this in here and it's the one that where, where I can have force powers. So, so yes. So <laughs> obviously Star Wars was just in the theaters. I finally got to saw it, see it. I'm um, watching it again tomorrow night with my brother. <laughs> um, I saw the D box. Loved it. Those seats that move. Oh, oh wow! That was a different experience, man. A where where was that at? Box killer. The, I, I go to the Pittsburgh Mills. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, Cinemark out here. So they've got those seats that whenever it's moving, you move. You know, and it's wow, wow. Well, <laughs> I may I may have to make a special trip out there. It was pretty awesome. Cool. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So sorry to interrupt. That's, a, oh, that's no, okay. That's fine. So, so one of the big Christmas gifts, and I, I think it was sold out in a lot of places, and it, it, I, I've seen them everywhere from. Mm-hmm. Chachi got one of these. Did he? Yeah. Uh, Krauss got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister's fiance got one. Um, but it's the, the so the BB-8 Sphero droid. Um, yeah. This is based on a on some tech that Disney came out with. It's a little. It was a little ball that could you could kind of tell it what to do with your phone and it would chase you around and stuff like that. So they made the BB-8 droid from Star Wars with this. And one of the things that they touted at CES was there will be a special edition of the, the BB-8 that's going to have the Jakku. Is that the per- correct name of the planet? Jakku. Uh, Jakku. Um, Jakku battle damage. That's a, that's a Jakku. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. And but the the cool thing is towards the end of the year this fall, they're going to actually have a smartwatch that allows yeah. you to control the BB-8 through hand gesture to kind of give it the force wave, and you can kind of move it around, stop it, all that kind of stuff. So you can see this kid right here; he's controlling BB-8 through the force. See now you're talking my language, okay? <laughs> yes, you know, you know, like I'm down with this stuff, okay? It's just those those 4K cameras that uh, for 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 199 dollars. I'm just not super familiar. Well, this is 150 dollars. So yes. The BB-8 oh, well, Sphere yeah, Android is 150. It, wait, why wouldn't it be? I mean, <laughs> you're controlling something with a force. You can't put a price tag on the force. <laughs> Show title, um, yeah. wow! Yeah, no, I, and I, I, I kind of, yeah, everybody wants one, right? I mean, it's uh, you just want that rolling around the house, messing with your dog, you know, or or children. Well, that's where I'm worried. I'm worried ones. about getting it because I'm worried Christopher's going to kick it, mm-hmm. or or like this is going to be like when Christopher goes to sleep and Daddy has time alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull out. Go BB-8. to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. Daddy needs to play with a small robot. <laughs> so Daddy's got to play with the force. But it's just a it's a fun little toy, and, and I'll be interested to see because I've, I've there's different modes you can put it in. You can put it in a patrol mode. I'm I, I'm I'm guessing that it's going to get to the point where you're going to be able to play hide and seek with it. Like that's awesome. I'm sure there's going to be a <laughs> then lot. Then the of, kids won't even need a puppy. Yes, exactly. It'll walk old people across the street. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. It'll tell them what things are in front of them and what color they are because it's using the technology from that other app from earlier. I mean, it's just bringing this stuff together, right? That's like, what, that's yeah. all Mark Zuckerberg's going to be doing in this new year to make yeah. his Jarvis robot if, whatever. If, Thank you, J.J. Abrams. <laughs> if, if they would raise the price of this by 100 bucks and put a small camera in the eyepiece. Oh, no. So you have a BB-8 nanny cam? Like, I would totally buy it. And Just to follow me around the house and take pictures <laughs> no, of me. No, no, this is when the government taps into that <laughs> stuff, man. No, I'm not. See, now you lost me again. But no, I, but I if, say, say it's say it's not it's not streaming that anywhere or anything. Say it's storing it on a micro SD card in the in there. You can't see me at home, but I'm doing the air quotes. It's <laughs> not streaming it. <laughs> So you're, you're thinking like 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 the drone that you toss up and it follows you while you skateboard. Exactly. Because you're going to skateboard. Yes. 
<laughs> well, I might have report. Amazon will be delivering packages with this thing. Yes. Yeah, you're right. There you go. BB, <laughs> just BB-8s. We're worried about polluting the skies with all these drones delivering our, <laughs> our packages of batteries. But it's going right. to be little just BB-8s just scatter, skittering around the neighborhood at that point, right? Um, little <laughs> BB-8 tunnels. This is like the next step from like the pneumatic tubes to deliver everything that they wanted back in the 30s. But, uh, wow. I'm glad we brought that around. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm interested to in see is, I mean, they're, they're accessorizing the BB-8. <laughs> like that's they're taking it and they're making it better. They're building on yeah, they're, yeah, this isn't like you have to buy a whole new BB-8 <laughs> just to get the, like the wrist remote. Oh force wait, so control. this is an add-on. This is going to be an add-on. So they have they have Malibu BB-8. <laughs> <laughs> now it travels on sand. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, and this is, yeah, I mean, this is the real stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think CES, um, yeah, we're going to have a, have a lot of things. Like, I was looking at where are the best of shows from last year. And most of them are canceled products, right? Mm -hmm. Except for Sling TV, apparently. Um, and trying to stay away from the TVs, trying to stay away from that stuff, because it's just like, eh, it's another TV. I was They're surprised to see how many refrigerators and and washing machines how how has the refrigerator and washing machine improved in the next year well, are they going to operate on force power and gestures as well lg and samsung are putting 21 and a half inch tablets embedded in the front seats you their... know what i also duct taped my ipad one <laughs> to my 15 year old frigidaire upstairs i got this okay technology uh it's my own personal ces but that's what I mean. That's that was like one of the big and LG and Samsung took hours today to tell us about their their refrigerator. Seriously, and their, yes. See, I don't remember there being keynotes at CES, and I found the schedule for this year's. And it's just they're talking about refrigerators for two hours. Pretty much, <laughs> refrigerators and and you got your microwave ovens. BB eight refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, like that was a big portion of LG and Samsung's announcements today were around their refrigerator, their um, their washer and their dryer. They, they like, is it like one more thing? No, it Crisper wasn't one more thing. Support. It was like <laughs> it was like, here's the hot new item. And mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Samsung commercials for their refrigerator with with Kristen Bell and what's his name? The blonde haired guy. What? Like I really love their refrigerator and their 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 commercials. They're they're great. <laughs> like what? what, what the, uh, remember, Samsung, I'm a, Sheila, I'm a cord cutter. I have no idea what in the blue hell you're talking so about. So Samsung has did this collection of commercials, and it actually started I think last Chris, two Christmases ago. Samsung, Kristen Bell. Please tell me it has something to do with Frozen. No, <laughs> the no freezer. Frozen. Um, <laughs> and do the one the one where. Um, the ones that they have a they have a four quadrant freezer refrigerator. Dax Shepard. Yes, that's her husband. Okay. Um, that guy from Punked. <laughs> <laughs> they have this four quadrant refrigerator freezer, and you can turn any quadrant into the freezer or the refrigerator. So, like, if say it's Thanksgiving and you want to thaw your turkey you can turn that quadrant from the freezer into the refrigerator i don't know i got her i got her this was the first i got her like dancing one the first one dancing to tablets or something like that yeah that was one of the first <laughs> ones when they were doing here? more like the the tablet type really technology. you can't come back to heroes reborn but you can do freaking uh tablet and refrigerator uh, commercials you, you control your refrigerator like with your tablet or phone yeah okay you can, so wait so, so my fresh... mother butt dials me on a daily basis <laughs> i cannot imagine her I'm having that technology in her purse, okay? But, and they come home, and everything is rotted. Absolutely <laughs> everything is defrosted. There is water all over the place. Nah, I don't know. What's man. the – there's there's the Amazon – is it Jetson Amazon Bull. Fresh? Bull. Amazon Fresh, yeah, the, the, the produce one? That's the produce one in yeah. California, right? Yeah. So in yeah. California, they're already, they're already hooked up. Samsung is already hooked up with Amazon Fresh. And so when you open your refrigerator and you go, oh, I'm out of lettuce, you literally tap the tablet and say, I need more lettuce. And an hour later, someone knocks at your door and says, here's your lettuce. Like Whirlpool's building D Amazon Dash into all of their devices, or into all their washers and dryers. So when you're running low on Tide, you hit the Amazon Dash button. 
Like they're building all this tech into it's all there into the device. That's that's the, all there. That's the freeze, freezer refrigerator. You know what? I'm you cool can with change this. on the fly. You know, I, and this is something that, that uh, we, we found the refrigerator one apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm completely down with the. I, I'm trying to life hack if I want to use that term. Um, but I don't want to go to the grocery store. But we want to get a lot of groceries, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're trying to convert from oh we eat out way too much or with the, with how busy things have been and how can we do that and how can we make that a little better and and like even to the point where you know what I will pay the ten dollars to do curbside express and drive to a market district mm-hmm. like because I because we did that because it was we wanted to get stuff on Sunday you need like four hours or a day in order to get something like that um, and we spent the day in market district it's my first time in a market district like full on did the full shopping i can't do that every sunday oh, I mean, I how can that. how can people how can normal people do that that's why we do we do costco i mean and we have we we call it we call it co- like mini costco in our basement we have a special room there you go off to the side that has an extra small like college fridge and a college freezer Mm-hmm. And that's mini Costco, and like you need you need more more toilet paper. Go to mini Costco. You know, you know. Sometimes I know some people out there get a little bewildered about how deep we go into technology, but I know <laughs> that we're completely relating to everybody when we're talking about mini Costco at this point. Like that's the yep. technology that everybody's really concerned about. But it, but it's that just in time. If you have the room to store it, and if you don't have the room to store, I mean, you've done the Amazon. Like you you've kind of converted a lot of stuff to Amazon. A lot of stuff, and I was trying to figure out the groceries, and I was actually comparing doing it through Amazon versus Walmart because the prices are a little better sometimes, even with the shipping. If you didn't get enough stuff, because mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, I, I found myself in a point where I was looking around, I was like, damn, I need detergent, and I literally walked upstairs and realized I had two recycle bags left, and they never have recycle bags at any of the stores around here. They don't, and and so I'm like, well, I got to order it anyways, and then I'm like, I just put detergent and. And recycle bags in the cart for Walmart and Amazon, and it's like I was doing arithmetic and and like hard arithmetic on an abacus and trying to figure out what was the better option. Got frustrated and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it just you know it's like is it worth it for me to just do this and just put a bunch of stuff and do a site to store and at least I pick it up. Like I walk to the back of the store and that feels kind of weird. You know, you know it, it'll figure in that kind of thing out. It's it's unfortunate that P- Pittsburgh is a great city. It is a it is a metropolitan area and, and and whatever. We're very spread out. When you go to New York City or you go to Los Angeles or these places, you've got um, there's I wouldn't say technology per se, but <clears throat> there are like Task Rabbit. Have you ever heard of Task Rabbit? Yeah, yeah. Where you can literally just go boop 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 on your phone, and someone will go to the grocery store and bring it right to you. Uh, Postmates. Um, we have Postmates you know, in the city. What's that? We have Postmates in the city. We, we know somebody that actually drives for them. Um, okay. And they will bring you just about anything, I think. Well, they exactly. bring me Taco Bell. And uh, potentially. I know they don't Chipotle. But anyway, sorry, Rob. There's, there's not enough oh, yeah. Taco Bells. Right. And that's the thing. Like, like, we haven't caught up to all of those things. A friend of mine started, um, worked for eBay, uh, did a startup called eBay Now, which was getting the product that you want and having it delivered to you within like two hours or whatever the, whatever the time span is. So, I mean, that stuff does, you know, that stuff exists. I just wish it existed in Pittsburgh. Like mm-hmm. the, the, well, it's all going to start in San Francisco or Austin or something like that. There were the big hubs for this and, and it'll filter out. Like we didn't have all have Amazon prime with everything like we do now, exactly. you know, that, yeah. that worked out, you know, or, or prime pantry has been worked out or, or having the certain sure. grocery stores that will do delivery, um, they're going to start where people are forward-minded and have a lot of expendable income, like a San Francisco, and that's where the tech companies are. Um, uh, uh, San Francisco is one big beta test, okay? <laughs> and as awesome as it sounds like, I don't think it's really that awesome to live there. <laughs> no, it's uh, expensive. It's, it's unbelievably expensive in San Francisco. Well, and that's where I feel the cost like... is is through the roof. I was yeah. looking a few months ago, I was looking to move to Los Angeles, and... Um, and I thought Los Angeles was expensive. And then I started looking at San Francisco and it is outrageous. Mm-hmm. Like the real estate, it's just unreal. Anyway, anyway. When I think that's where like the Lyft and the Uber, I think that's the bridge. <sighs> so if you, if, if you went on Uber sister site and I'm making this up, this doesn't exist. If you went on Uber sister site and said, I need peanut, I want peanut butter and I want peanut butter now. Aren't they doing something like that though? I think they, I think they in a couple, are. in a couple cities, but I yeah. think this is like, I think this is where they're going to really start to make money. Hey, pick me up at my house. We'll pick up some peanut butter. Well, not, no, I think what it's going to be is 
you go on and say, I want peanut butter, and yeah. they have to go to Coons, where, wherever. Local grocery store, local if you're not local store, to Pittsburgh. Yeah. They, they have to go to the local grocery store, but there's someone that needs picked up on the, the way back from there, right? but is getting dropped off before your house. So they're already on that route there mm-hmm. and back, and mm-hmm. but at the same time, they're double dipping and picking up another person. So they're making twice the amount of money mm-hmm. off that trip. I think that's the, the key and the growth potential for things like Uber and Lyft. Well, we're at it since you brought up the Uber. I was in my first Uber a couple weeks ago. Um, and there's a question I got. Are you supposed to tip on Uber? Is it yeah. like a taxi? Like, I thought you were supposed to, but you had to bring cash. You had to bring. I didn't know about the cash. And then somebody told me never tip because they have flux pricing and they get the, the benefit of that. So I don't yeah. know. That was, again, a philosophical thing, I think. So I didn't because I thought it was all done in app. Uh, so I didn't have anything. And when he's like, when he's like, I got a dongle, I'm like, I don't trust your dongle. And I got left. Uh, but <laughs> so I, I, I'm just not going to let my stripe, my, uh, uh, credit card in, in strange dongles. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I was done with that situation. Sorry, buddy. Yep. So totally I gave him five stars. Okay. <laughs> I gave him five stars, even though he didn't talk That's as good as a tip, even though he was not very, con- yes, exactly. <laughs> even though it was not a great conversationalist. Um, I let I let him have five stars, uh, but anyways, I don't All know. All these delivery products, or let me ask you: if I was in Beachview and I wanted a slice of pizza, like could I get something like delivered to my house, say from like Broadway or something? If you're in Beachview, you can yeah. tweet me at Sorgatron and uh, talk me into bringing you a slice of pizza. Okay. All right. All right. That's, just, that's how it does. I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own Uber. Uh, that solely <laughs> delivers. You know what? They also <laughs> deliver. <laughs> they also actually deliver if you're in Beachview, so you don't need any of this stuff. Exactly. Yeah, well, if you're yeah. like, maybe I. Hey, <laughs> I was maybe do another plug for you. Maybe <laughs> maybe the pizza awesome. guy looked at you funny. I don't know. It's probably your fault, right? Because they're really nice people at Slice on Broadway, and <laughs> then you call <laughs> Uber, and they. I don't, what what is happening? So slice. Slice on Broadway doesn't deliver to Oakmont, but could I get them to deliver it to like the outskirts? Could I get an Uber driver to pick up the slice, then bring it all the way? To no, Oakmont? no, 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 no. I got this. I got this. I completely figured okay, this okay, out. Okay. So okay. you find somebody you know in the area that, that sure. Slice on Broadway delivers to in one of their two fine locations, and then you have that person. You pay for that person's Uber to come out to your place. Okay, yes, so yes. So they bring the pizza. Uh, it's all good. But I, and see, this is where I think even somewhere Listen, like Pittsburgh. There are companies people, getting venture capitalism solving the exact same thing I just solved right now. But people people in Pittsburgh are picky and finicky enough about certain places that they eat and certain types of things where they do travel ridiculous amounts or rid, ridiculous ways to get a certain slice of pizza or a certain hamburger or a certain whatever. I'm I guarantee you there's there's room for growth potential even in somewhere like Pittsburgh for this type of 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 idea. Oh yeah, certainly. I think so. And especially kind of taking on those mom and pop things that are not going to do delivery, you know, or say, you know, I I'm in, you know, Oakmont and I want a Fiori's, I want a I want a that taco stand in Brookline, you know, or something like that, you know. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that, that makes sense, you know. Uh, you know, for instance, when we had the cafe uh, we had some people on our mailing list that says, I need to unsubscribe because I work downtown during the day. You're not open past like it was like two or three because we're kind of a lunch and uh, breakfast thing. Um, I can't participate and get your stuff. You know, there's just no chance. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not even taking a train out. You, you know what it would be like for you to go from downtown out to Mount Lebanon on a train and back or yeah, even driving or something like that. It just doesn't work for a lunch, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you had a delivery, but I mean, again, count location delivery areas or somebody that that had that worked out with an uber kind of thing like we described i think that could be very interesting yeah it's, debbie and millville wants a prannel's uh, almond tort you know you gotta <laughs> get someone out there to get that there oh my god hey they can't like there's a lot of money to be made they can't and they will tip not just five stars sort of hey technology gonna try a lift next and see if they get mad when i don't tip them um Anyways, by the way, Lyft, uh, there's a code on, does this hold up uh, for, for getting on there? I think D-H- it's just something or D-T-H-U, D-T-H-U. Whatever the heck their name is. <laughs> so I'm going to try that out next. I'm getting all the free rides, <laughs> see what's good, 
try to get all my buddies to sign up for it so I can get some free rides. <laughs> We're going to hack the Ubers. Um, anyways, is there anything else from CES that's not a robot? That Oh, by the way, uh, from the chat, I believe Bobby of J-Town brought this up. Uh, we talked about Amazon and their, uh, the buttons, the dash buttons. I got to say, you know, if you really need that Gatorade right now, they got one for you. <laughs> They got they got a dash button for Gatorade, so I mean that, that, that kind of surprised me because the rest of it's like tied and bounty and glad and stuff like that. That's what I needed for my recycle bags. I needed a glad button, so I didn't even think but about. But glad do the, do they have the blue ones? Because like everyone wants the well, blue ones. Well, you can ones. set that because you get that you can set that. So like I hit the glad button and glad buttons the the glad recycle bags because it's just not we're gonna send you whatever tied we decide that you want to. You say I want this tied to be the um uh spring fresh uh uh extra whitey tidy edition tide or whatever the heck it is right mm -hmm. um like you, you you program what that signals basically so i think it kind of you know narrows down to that so and by the way the, the, these are 4.99 for you to buy but i'm pretty sure that gets credited on you your get a first five dollar credit on you the get first that on your purchase. first part so that's just so you're not like buying a bunch of buttons and hacking them like we did with that uh with the qcat over here oh where'd it go the Q cat from Radio Shack Q -cat ran away. away, and we never bought anything with this thing. It's buried. I don't know where it is. That's the other. That's the tail. That's the tail of the Q cat. Anyways, um, so yes, anything else? The the one last thing is, um, and I put more car standards. Does more standards mean less standardization? Um, so Ford Ooh. Ford has um, a a technology that's open source called Smart Device Link. And it's kind of the way that developers can link to buttons and controls and open UI standards. Um, some developer or some companies like Toyota and Cunix, if you're familiar with Cunix, um, they've um, all they've both agreed to adopt the technology. Based on them d adopting the technology, means that Peugeot, uh, Honda, Subaru, and Mazda are also now thinking about. Um, adopting the same technology. This is all built into the part of the Sync 3 infotainment platform um, as, far to, as part of Ford's AppLink. Um, I think this is, a, this is another inroads to getting more automation and smarts into your car. And why I find this interesting is most of us don't buy new cars every year or every other year, whereas that's, our, that's our, how often we replace our phones. Um, so with this, as your phone updates, obviously your the 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 smarts of your car is going to kind of probably upgrade along with it. So that was an interesting okay. an interesting segue. I, and so I, why are we doing this versus the idea of our Android iPhone one, where it ju it's just your phone guts, and we just use your phone guts? So I think part of this kind of rides on top of this, and this is what lets iHeartRadio design their UI and work it into additional buttons on the dashboard and on your steering wheel. Um, so I think this is this is kind of a, an addition to that, or sits on top of, of the CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, like I said, I, again, I think it's another one of these technologies that we need more than just Google and Apple sitting at the helm controlling, and we need people to push them forward. Um, so I think Ford being in here and, and already having some some technology in this area, I think is just going to be another another good good company to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So I thought it, I thought it was an interesting one, and I, I was surprised that Ford being at the forefront, that Toyota, Honda, Subaru, all these other car manufacturers aren't aren't pulling the Android Pay Google, or Apple Pay concept and said you know what we're going to come up with our own qr code and we're going to come up with this own, our own things they're actually jumping on more of an open source more of a standard um so that's that also excited me awesome I, yeah it, it's definitely um uh, they've been making headway i know ford sync was really kind of lauded as as kind of like these guys are paying attention to technology but we're kind of seeing how how far behind that feels you only get that if you're like i bought a new car you know and how many of us actually are buying new cars uh, in reality um but uh there's a there's a philosophy in car making that just doesn't work with technology and mm -hmm. they need to separate that they really do um and, and and treat car technology like technology companies do than car companies do so we'll see how that goes i mean again i believe it when i see it out there 
which means I'll believe it when I buy a car in about five years <laughs> and it has this year's version in it <laughs> and get mad because my phone's still smarter. Uh, but uh, but I, I think that's the reality of the situation. But, but I think the reality of the situation is that it's not going to be it's not going to be when you get to that next car, it's no longer going to be your waiting then to leapfrog the technology because whatever you have on that phone right, is going to that. is going to kind of integrate modular. I mean, why don't we get modular TVs? You know, we're talking about smart TVs and how like how get a smart TV from two years ago. See how that feels. Mm-hmm. You know, I know how my the Roku generation one feels. You know, and I get emails from Roku reminding me that I still have it and I need to upgrade. <laughs> is my car going to start emailing me and let me know I need to upgrade to the Linnaeus Cavalier because, uh, uh, you know, well, isn't there twenty? Is it twenty thirteen Ford Sync hmm. customers are going to get an upgrade? Damn it! Just under the wire. So they're, they're I mean, they're we're going also, back we're, pretty we're far. We're also not like a touchscreen Ford Sync. Mm-hmm. Like we're like, well, there's Bluetooth and stuff, and I got a little label that says Microsoft in my in the car. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's not that big touch screen. Um, it's going to do Pandora kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but, uh, no, that's good that they're, they are doing updates like that. You know, 2013, that's, that's a while back for, uh, for cars, certainly. So not, <clears throat> not to take away from what you guys are saying, but this technology scares me a little bit in these cars. Um, one, they're, it's expensive to replace. So if there's things that's like, that, it, that, it, that are completely dependent in the car, um, to certain technologies. I had a friend who just told me, um, that she, she bought a brand new, this, this Buick that was beautiful, this amazing car, but she would get in the car and the seat would be completely all the way to the steering wheel every time she would get in it and then would have to like readjust. And then she'd be driving and all of a sudden the seat would start moving forward. The, um, the, 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 the audio was really, really bad. Um, there would be times where the screen would completely go out or there would be like gauges that would not be properly functioning. It's a brand new car. All of the technology in this thing, it was a computer problem. And they, and, but she had to send, take it back to the dealership. And they were like, we have absolutely no idea what is wrong with this. Mm. Nothing that they could plug in was telling them why the seats were like moving on their own. Uh, it was like a ghost. In so, vehicle. so we need a Ford Sync Genius Bar. Uh, yes, to get, yes, take yes, care yes, of those. Yes. I mean, it's a whole new market at this point, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that's. I mean, you, you guys have seen the stories over the last year of the hacked cars, and I can shut down this this car, or, you know, while they're driving it, or something like that. Which is, you know, it was a very kind of fixed kind of situation. But they're, they're like, no, no, we don't all have to worry about this. But we should probably start paying attention to the problem, mm-hmm. so it doesn't become a problem. Um, it's uh it, it is a thing i mean it's an unsecure bluetooth that can that that communicates to your wheels for t- tire pressure is is yeah. a is is an open window for anybody to get into your car i don't even know if i have that in my car it's new enough it probably does you need to encrypt your bluetooth i need to encrypt my in my car it's a closed <laughs> system hey there's gonna be an open system mm-hmm. now so maybe we can take care of that but i don't know it'll be interesting to see what's going on there well, hey, shout out real quick uh, before we head out for this week. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here. And uh, live.awesomecast.net. We get going about 6.30 p.m. or so. We're doing a little bit of setup. You guys can pop in the stream, say hi to us, say hi to everybody jumping in there. Uh, but, uh, hey, shout out to our friends, PittsburghRetroGaming.com. We're, we're actually, uh, one of the guys from this uh, is going to be joining us on the show next week uh, on AwesomeCast. So uh, please look, at, look forward to that. And uh, also scheduled... Actually, we'll, we'll finish this plug. Uh, retro, uh, PittsburghRetroGaming.com. It's going to be at the former Metropole, uh, Zetasia, I think it's called. Xtasia, maybe, over there in the Strip. Uh, but it is a, a cool little uh, convention they're doing. They're going to have a lot of old games on there. They actually did a great uh, interview uh, with Marta on the Move. I think that's MartaOnTheMove.com, if I, if I recall. Just look for that on, um, on your Stitcher or your iTunes. Uh, and uh, they're really uh, kind of they're doing it for a good cause it's for uh, um, um, children's uh, children's hospitals. Uh, they're selling tickets for that. Uh, you can get those over there at PittsburghRetroGaming.com. January twenty third, ten a.m. to three p.m. And they also got a pretty cool thing. You can reserve your copy of this game called Germ Squashers. It's going to be available legit. It's going to be available on Nintendo Entertainment System. So dust it <laughs> off, blow on the contacts. Sega Genesis, iOS, and Android. It's an educational uh, homebrew game. 
Uh, again, proceeds uh, benefiting Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh defeat germs and sink into two-player germ squashing action as you work towards the ultimate goal, a pixelated flu shot power-up. Uh, so uh, we, we're going to have more information on this in the coming weeks as we go up to there. Uh, but go check that out. Find more information. Sign up for it and uh, ask them any questions you may have in the meantime. Um, always cool for gaming for a good cause in Pittsburgh, obviously with Chachi Plays for Kids that we do every year. And uh, looking forward to see what these guys have in store for us. It's the second year they've been doing this, too. I, I don't know how we missed it last year. Uh, but there's that. Um, also, like I said, next week uh, we are scheduled to talk to Kim Lyons of uh, nextpittsburgh.com. Uh, we've been having some great uh, talks with her on Twitter. I think, Chili, you've been a part of that as well mm -hmm. uh, because I know we've been sharing a lot of her articles. I even know she's on the byline. I just know like this is a cool article, and she's attached to all the cool stuff we like at <laughs> nextpittsburgh.com, apparently. Uh, so it was, it's really cool. We're going to have her on next week and have a conversation with her um, about what's going on over there and then just startups in Pittsburgh and, and wherever that goes. So look forward to that around 5 p.m. next week. At live at awesomecast.net. Wait, that are actually live.sorgatronmedia.com because I don't think that other URL works anymore. Yeah, I always use live.sorgatronmedia. I think that I think that 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 bit the dust somewhere along the line. Thank you, GoDaddy. Uh, so I'm going to have to look at that in the new year as well. Uh, from that, hey, Rob, Rob on the run on the Twitters. Thank you so much for joining us. Brother, thanks for asking me. I love the both of you guys. You guys are awesome <laughs> and a lot of fun. And I'm not a tech guy and so i feel like i always learn a lot from the two of you and, and, and you always bring it you always bring an interesting an interesting take on things so it's it's always very helpful yeah <laughs> well i appreciate you having me thanks it's so not much. just about technology it's about online and your guys it's living and doing some really cool things online so so you definitely fit into the mold yeah. of this show it's about the creators as well as the technologists around here okay. Uh, so it's yeah. all encompassing. So thank you so much for joining us. Rob on the run on the Twitters. Check out his vines. Check out his Instagrams. All kinds of fun stuff going on there. So Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter is John Chichilla. He's the gadget hound of the show. And if the show doesn't get the title Ungrateful Little Tweeters, let it be known. Oh, wait I think geez. Ungrateful Little Tweeters would make an awesome, awesome That title. was <laughs> not in the list but uh, <laughs> that I just received from uh, wife of the show, Missy, at Rebellious Flaw on the Twitter. That's been helping us out with tweets and the chat room wrangling and 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 sending me notes of love. I assure you, uh, in in my personal chat over here, I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Check out this show, AwesomeCast.net. Subscribe to it and check out all the past episodes. They're relevant, and especially our specials over the last couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Uh, support the show. Share the show. If anything else, just if you dig it and you have some friends on your Twitter list or Facebook that you're really uh, I think we get into some of the stuff we're talking about here and some of the fun we're having. Uh, please just get that around here if you could. Thank you so much to our friends uh, in the chat room all night, including Alex Cars out there in Cali, Bobby F. J. Town, Hot Wheels down in California, PA. Krauss is in there earlier, I do believe, and uh, so many more. Uh, thank you so much. You have been your awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.